very good morning welcome you all to the nptel course on electrical distribution system analysis and today we'll be talking about system planning electrical distribution system planning is a very very important issue the reason being the growth of transmission system is quite huge however the frequency in which the systems such as low voltage networks are being upgraded very frequently so it is very important to plan your distribution system so that you can operate it very efficiently and which is quite robust for an example if a new colony or a new residential area is being developed outskirt of a urban city because initially what happens you really do not know how it is going to grow but country like ours i mean almost uh, 140 crore community i think uh, even some of the green lands being converted into residential areas over a period of time now the growth normally happens in pockets and not necessarily in a plan that we have visioned before 10 years so for an example even putting a substation at a particular location which has to cater 1000 plus residential areas need to be well planned because cost is related to your planning and proper planning related to your robustness of the distribution system so today let us focus how the distribution system can be planned from time to time to start with you know planning involves making careful decisions based on systematic thoughts and the main objective is to provide satisfactory service at the lowest possible cost so in general what we do like we have to focus on creating you know vision values and mission and then you have to plan objectives which are short term medium term long term and then you have to have supporting plans what are the policies strategies regulatory measures criteria standard rules and finally the important one is budget now in the past all the distribution systems being owned by the government entities and over a period of time now due to privatization many private agencies are now looking after the distribution systems so imagine the load has to grow the load growth is fixed that we cannot stop it but in percentage through which it is going to increase is reasonably not known to us priori but we can tentatively forecast the load growth over a period of time so the distribution companies are expected to plan their distribution system well before time before the load grow and we must be in a position to cater in contrary the distribution companies do not want to spend too much of money to be well prepared ahead of time so i think there there is a you know throat cut competition where the distribution company has to cater the increased load with minimum investment become a challenging task and that can only be achieved through proper planning of distribution networks now when you talk about power utility planning goals we need to identify the best schedule of future resources and actions to achieve utility goals that means i mean let's say you have a distribution system and the distribution system also buy energy for their own customers because the energy cost which is going keep on varying every hourly or every 15 minutes or maybe every day so we need to buy the energy with lower cost so that the energy cost need to be paid by my consumer will be very very minimum now driven by future needs and time to fulfill these needs with defined priorities in the master plan become a question now which involves an elaborate and systematic plan of action for the future so we have to have a strategic cycle of thinking planning delivery and review regulatory measures by central and state regulatory commissions as per the electricity act 2003 section 79 and 86 ensure service quality and performance standards for an example 
let us say at a particular duration the energy cost is very very high. Okay? So, naturally as a business entity or a distribution company owner I will not prefer to buy that energy for my consumers because I know if I do buy to cater my consumers then I have to pay more money and I have to collect more money from the consumers. So, there are two ways for me either I have to have my own generation to produce it cheaply or I have to pay huge amount to buy energy during peak time and make sure that none of my customers are facing any energy cut or energy failure. Now, there are two issues here. First is the distribution company need to pay a lot of money to make sure that there is no shortage of energy or there is no peak energy deficit experienced by the consumers that is one goal. And second the consumers may not be attached to your distribution company if you are not providing a reliable energy supply chain or a system throughout the year. So, I think that is an important question need to be seen. Second, now you do have industrial loads and these industrial loads actually normally create huge uh, harmonics for your distribution system which is a bigger challenge. So, you need to have industrial load to your system, but you have to make sure that there is no harmonic associated. So, I think the regulatory commissions always force the distribution companies to make sure there is continuous 24 by 7 energy supply okay? and distribution company must make sure that the system is not hampered due to huge harmonic injection by the consumers as well as the distribution company must survive even purchasing high rated energy during peak hours. Now, what we need to do in case of your planning, I mean the planning need to be done in a long term basis, medium term basis and short term basis. When we say long term one has to plan for 5 to 10 years origin and in case of medium terms probably it is 1 to 2 years and short term actually you have to immediately plan for the current and just next year. So, one has to plan properly short term planning to the best and then certainly for long term and medium term for robustness and sustainability. Now, there are many feasibility studies which says identify, evaluate and finalize the best plan and first of all you need to define the problem, find alternatives, options, then evaluate those alternatives and select the best one. So, and then we have to prepare a project report for the distribution company side, prepared for long, medium and short term works, include an additional plan or per chart or bar chart for each activity and work and set different yardsticks or milestones to complete the assignments from time to time. And then finally, all the distribution companies need to go to regulatory commission to get it approved uh, from the own organization both financial and economic appraisals and also the regulatory approval from the regulatory commissions from the state and hence it need to be implemented. Now, when you do a planning study, you know first of all when we talk about planning of distribution system. So, we need to do the implementation of plans and then finally, monitoring comparing with the outcomes and then there could be some few new plans because there are few challenges that you observe and then you move to no undesirable deviation from the plan and then you can have new plans and come to the planning origin. And if there are some issues then you can experience some undesirable deviations then you have corrective actions and then finally, you reach out to planning activities. So, this is how actually we learn over a period of time. For an example, you have established a distribution system 11 kV slash 415 volt and then you realize no this is not going to work here that need to be increase the rating need to go up because the area is growing very fast that you have never thought of. So, that case actually you learn and then you again go for a new planning to address the issues on ground. Now, the planning methods what we do basically first of all we forecast of energy as well as we forecast the power for a period that is maybe for 1 to 2 years let us say it is for 12 months and then deciding generation and energy purchase. So, we need to plan actually how you are going to procure the energy and then finally, we go for special forecast of energy. So, first of all 
for power demand with specific growth rate over a period of time. For example, if you are thinking of 3 years, so today it could be 7 percent increase and then it could be let us say 8 percent and then it could be 10 percent. So, you cannot be prepared with 7 percent constant increase. So, you need to plan how it is going to increase over a period of time and then decide the sub transmission distribution substation locations, capacity and the as I told you in the beginning of my talk actually how it is going to grow in a particular area accordingly the substations need to be planned before they are being expanded. And finally, deciding the primary and secondary networks location and its capacity, existing system improvement and then expansion program. So, this is how it is basically a feedback mechanism you plan the forecasting, plan the energy procurement, then you go for substation distribution networking and then finally, you implement. Now, there are very interesting approaches, please concentrate in this diagram. Now, existing generation capacity you know because let us say we are doing it for a very long term with a 21st century planning approach. So, we had certain loads over a period of time and then it is keep on increasing I mean over the years and naturally the demand curve the megawatt required demand curve is certainly it is going to spike ok there is no doubt about it. But the question is when we this energy demand what we are talking about this is the order in which first of all we have to work out energy efficiency mechanism means if some lightning which is currently with you know conventional lightning system can be replaced by let us say LEDs all right. So, with the same light let us say the reduction of energy is close to 60 percent. So, we can reduce the 60 percent increase of energy for a given period of time over a year through energy efficiency mechanism. And then we can also do it through load management mechanism that means load can be managed at uh, maybe a distributed way ok. You can divert the loads maybe distribution system planning can be arranged in such a manner no new distribution substation need to be uh, installed immediately or you can delay the time for some time ok. So, you can delay that delay the installation by some time by proper load management schemes and then we move to the distribution generation sites. So, we can induct actually bit of uh, distributed generations probably could be renewables or maybe bit of uh, diesel generators though it is not recommended nowadays, but we need to have it. So, through that we can manage and then you can reduce bit of actually theft, theft means it is not really theft to me to be very frank. So, it is basically unaccounted energy ok. So, it could be improper calculation unaccounted energy. So, those components can be reduced. So, when you reduce those components probably the distribution company become more sustainable ok. And then saving of electricity I mean underutilized devices and proper utilization of energy could be another solution. And finally, net new generation plant grid connected capacity to be added. So, you can add new generation new systems to your network. So, that over a period of time in next 20 years time, next 10 years time you are well ahead, well prepared with time. There is one interesting concept as you could see this is known as demand side management. So, demand side management probably delay allow you to delay your investment ok. So, instead of putting a new power plant immediately as and when load increases probably we can do bit of load management schemes which is known as demand side management. So, your activity during the peak load hours can be displaced to some of the off peak hours. So, that you can delay your investment for installing new generation capacity that will help you even in reduction reducing your investment in the distribution system planning side. So, traditional least cost planning what we normally do we minimize the cost of electricity supply by acquiring resources at the lowest cost considering all resource cost construction, operation, sub transmission, distribution, consumer and environmental cost. Now, when we identify the inadequacies that is poor voltage regulation, higher system losses, higher equipment failures, bad quality of power supply and no scope for future load growth. So, that means, these are challenges actually that need to be identified and removed from your traditional least cost planning 
So the classical way actually even though you do a you know reasonable planning, it is not necessary that you will be free from all those challenges. For example, if you have let us say there is a street and it is a long street okay, and the substation is staying in the entry gate of the street. So naturally the voltage issues being experienced by rural areas with a single feeder going half a kilometer, one kilometer. I think you cannot stop those voltage reduction and the poor voltage experiences at the substation as well as near to the consumer end. So probably those things need to be addressed in case of your planning. Now initial system improvements cost effective in addressing system inadequacies compared to laying a new extended system. So there are multiple options available to you. You can do system improvement or you can do network expansions. System improvement means augment and strengthen the existing system, improve reliability and quality of supply, reduce commercial and technical losses and in case of network expansion evaluate least cost optimal solutions considering capital cost, kilowatt and energy losses and net present values compare net present value to choose the least cost solutions. Now let us focus little bit on demand side management. Though I have given you a bit of introduction in my last last slide, but let us get into in detail about what is demand side management. Now planning implementation and evaluation of utility activities designed to encourage consumers to modify their electricity consumption pattern, reduces energy cost for consumers and defers the need for new capital expenditure. Okay. So, if you can manage the demand properly, you can defer the need for new capital infrastructures which minimizes adverse environmental impact because you are not adding new generation immediately include reduction of CHG emissions. The report of National Development Council Committee on Power has indicated the potential for energy conservation is as follows. Industrial sector 20 percent, agriculture sector 30 percent, domestic and commercial sector is close to 20 percent. Now what are the benefit? Reduce consumer energy bills naturally because when you are not investing extra money, so that means your cost of energy become lower and hence you will also charge a tariff which is reasonable, reduce need for infrastructure, economic development and job creation, increase competitiveness, reduced maintenance cost, improved air quality because generation is being reduced, reduced emissions, enhanced national security and increase comfort and productivity. Now the program evaluation which benefit cost analysis, avoid supply cost identifications and then long term planning for meaningful participation levels. Now, Utility demand side management programs, there are many categories. The first one is conservation programs which improves efficiency of equipments, buildings and industrial processes. That means for any existing system, we can work out for the energy efficiency approach may be replacing a device with an efficient component so that the, the same activity can be carried out with less energy. Now load management programs that redistribute energy demand to balance load throughout the day that is known as load management. Strategic load growth program that means increase energy use during low demand period. That means if you have a load profile, we have off peak hours and peak hours. It says that increase energy use during low demand period means can we add some load during off peak hours so that some portion of the peak hours can be shifted to my off peak hour. So that will flatten the load curve and hence your utility DMS program can be achieved. Now we need to inform the consumers about generic energy efficient options. We need to train, we need to have workshop, we would educate the people. I mean there is one interesting example when we talk about there is a washing machine that normally we operate as and when we desired, even sometime ignorantly, we switch on the washing machine during peak hours, am I right? So the question here that if that device which is not necessary to be a priority device, 
which can be operated at any given time including midnight but somehow actually we don't do it so the consumers need to be educated that please do not run your washing machine during peak hours so that is one kind of information programs we call and then we talk about site specific information program where provide tailored dsm measures for specific sectors financing program that means assist consumers with loans rebates and shared saving programs this is a very very important point financing programs means now let's say the same example of washing machine you tell the consumers that please switch on your washing machine during off peak hours or maybe during you know after 11 pm and then a consumer may say because the energy cost remains same at 7 pm as well as at 11:30 pm so why do i switch on at 11:30 let me switch on at 7 pm because i am not losing any anything out of it but if you say it will be half the cost or even free cost after 11:30 if you give some assurance of actually saving programs so then the consumer may get up at midnight and switch on the washing machine so until unless you initiate shared saving programs with the consumers and if you involve them in the part, in, you allow them to participate in your day to day programs of demand side management activity probably this program may not be successful so the main idea is to involve your consumers educate them and give some benefit in return so that they will participate and help to defer your investment for a long time and then direct installation programs you design finance and install efficiency measures that is from the distribution company side you can do that so with different criteria for planning perspective plan which is which talks about 50 year plan for anticipated load growth and forecast load centers annual review based on achieved targets and then you have to have detailed project report to achieve the criteria such as identify long term and short term system strengthening networks address poor performing feeders reconfigure them and augmentation of line conductors and distribution transformers implement new technologies for system improvement and develop a loss minimization plan over a period of time now payback period financial analysis to reduce demand and energy consumption means you need to have a strategy that how much you invest and how do you re- get it returned back through reduced demand and energy consumption over a period of time security measures where you can have alternative supply sources for industrial cities sub transmission open ring circuits 33 66 132 220 kv 11 kv open ring main system in urban areas alternative supply arrangement for important low voltage consumers independent feeders for major industrial consumers separate feeders for rural areas now the voltage level for power connections up to 10 kilowatt normally we connect to 240 volt 10 kilowatt to 50 kilowatt it is certainly 450 to 240 three phase for 50 kilowatt to 5 megawatt we connect to 11 kb 5 megawatt to 30 megawatt it is 33 kb or sometimes 66 30 megawatt to 50 megawatt 132 kb and anything beyond 50 megawatt being connected to 220 kb now economic appraisals where evaluate alternate plans to least net present value now load research facilities which talks about identify consumer load profile and forecast load changes underground distribution for historical buildings implement underground systems for historical buildings for national importance 11 kb outgoing feeders which limit to 10 feeders per distribution substation and feeder length not to exceed 12 km so these are the guidelines probably most of the cases the distribution system do obey and sometime they violate now in case of loss minimization measures lt lines not exceeding 0.8 km use aerial bunched cables in city areas improved metering with electronic meters for all consumers this is mandatory now 66 kb and 33 kb levels not exceeding 2000 mba and 750 mba respectively to avoid failures 11 kb not exceeding 350 mba in urban and 250 mba in rural areas 
And as you know about the harmonic distortion where 5% is the limit that need to be maintained. Now regarding the planning standard, we need to aim for efficiency, economy and utility convenience. Confirm to standards such as Indian standards, rural electrification corporation standards, IEC, ISO, Electricity Act 2003. Now we need to develop a standard cost structure for material and labor rates, system voltage standards as per Indian standard and rules, account for at least 10 years of load growth in new or improvement schemes, install fixed slash switched sunt capacitors of substation to improve power factor and voltage profiles, install fixed LT capacitors on distribution transformers, maintain one mobile substation for every 100 substation as spare capacity to meet out the emergencies. Now when you carry out the economic and financial analysis, I mean determine the most cost effective plan among alternatives, assess the rate of return and risk on the investment. Now annual expenses funded through operating revenue, capital expenditure funded through financing, reinvested reserves, reinvested earning and consumer contributions and both annual expenses and capital expenditure to carry out a proper planning for your investment resources either through a loan scheme or if your own investment. Now return on capital become a very, very important challenge because once you invest as a distribution company, as a private owner, they have to make sure that they get the return on capital in time. So the investment and ROC become important. Investment is worthwhile if return on capital is greater than cost of capital. Cost of capital influenced by economic conditions determined by institutions like the Reserve Bank of India. Now time value of mon money is a very interesting concept. Let us discuss what is time value of money because you have let us say it is basically we normally say that the energy cost was 10 paisa before 50 years and today it is 10 rupees something like that. Okay, So the for the same energy you have to pay different price with time period Okay, and as well as the investment previously you can do a substation installation with 1 lakh rupees and today you have to spend let us say 20 lakh rupees. Okay, So that need to be understood. Now time value of money means money has time value, interest on its use must be paid because you know when the time delay when you get the loan from the bank and when you repay you have to pay something beyond it. Interest rate determines by economic conditions, future value formulas that is FB which is given by FB which is present value times 1 plus i to the power n okay and probably the number of year and i will be the interest rate. So from this calculation we can say that pv which is future value upon 1 plus i to the power n. So if the future value is known to me you can calculate present value and vice versa subject to you know the number of years that you are going to pay as well as the interest rate of each year. The total revenue requirement of investment is the sum of the annual charges extending over the service like return on investment, depreciation cost, insurance expenses, operating and maintenance expenses, interest on loan capital and working capital, taxes and other cost. Now calculate some of the present value of revenue requirement for each alternative most economically alternative has minimum present value of revenue requirement. Now leverage annual cost method which says convert capital investment to equivalent annual annuity using uniform capital recovery factor where we can say the uniform annual charge R which is given by P times I into 1 plus I to the power N upon 1 plus i to the power n minus 1. This will give you uniform annual charge. Now there is one more interesting concept known as uniform series present worth method. It talks about calculate present worth of uniform annual cost or payment over a period. Okay. 
Now, the uniform series present worth which is given by P dash which is R dash time 1 plus i to the power n minus 1 upon i times 1 plus i to the power n. So, let us compare two different examples graphically uniform annual charge R and uniform series present worth. So, that means if we can plot the characteristic like R versus P okay, over a period of years, first year, second year, third year up to the nth year. So, the nth year is not really known to me, okay. but if P is known, I can calculate the value of R. Similarly, in this case uniform series present worth, if the P dash is not known to me, the R dash is known to me. So, from that R dash we can calculate what about P dash and from P we can calculate what is. So, these are the two mechanism one can plan from you know of your R dash value to P dash and P values to R. Another interesting concept known as benefit to cost ratio uh, which ranks projects by ratio of present value of revenue benefit to cost incurred used by rural electrification corporation and central electricity authority that is CA. Now, there is one more cost known as life cycle cost which talks about total cost of owning a project over its lifetime considering purchase, installation, operation, maintenance and disposal. Now, the present worth economic analysis accounts for all ownership cost IRR internal rate of return very very important concept calculate discount rate needed for present value of return to equal present value of investment. A positive NPV indicates a net benefit. However, a negative NPV will talk about the negative benefit that is the loss. Now, payback period time required to recover the initial investment investments means it is similar to your any project. So, you may have 25 years plan, we can have 20 years plan. Ideally, in distribution system planning, most of the payback period is too too long, at least 20 to 25 years. Does not consider time value of money or investment life after payback. Used as an indication of investment risk, acceptable payback period for utility project which is 1 to 5 years. Now, we are moving to another new section which is known as mapping. So, when you have a distribution system which is very large and widely placed and uh, we need to make sure that the distribution network is being analyzed or processed. But over a period of time, the system is keep on expanding. So, your data structure or the detailing of the distribution system can easily be captured through a global positioning system so called GPS. Now, GPS provide precise time and position information using earth orbiting satellites require signals from at least three satellites for latitude and longitude, a fourth for uh, altitude. Now, rules exist for sharing GPS satellite for GIS job. Now, components for GIS using GPS, so what we need 24 US naval GPS satellite in different orbits. 17,700 kilometer above earth, portable mobile GPS receivers antennas plus console, base receiver stations for different corrections. Now, can we use GPS for distribution system planning application? That is the question today. Yes, it can be used for distribution system planning and operation. Locating tap of points, transformers and different facilities of your distribution system can be identified. Mapping system with up to 1 meter accuracy, capturing network data for 11 kb and above voltage levels. For LT networks, maps can be drawn based on judgment and I approximation. Maps can be prepared on survey of India seeds. Latest geographical information necessary for correct digital network diagrams maintained by agencies like Survey of India that is NRSA, topographical seats available at rupees 20 to 25 approx, 
digitize geo coded maps available on cd roms with approximately 7 to 8000 rupees digital mapping software create an integrated and automated facility model process involves digitizing paper maps and linking them using a digitized board now when you like to carry out digitized mapping which covers the complete area and avoid any duplication digitize 130 to 33 kb system first followed by 11 kb and then 415/240 volt networks use gps and bhf sets for high accuracy in dense urban area use oracle rdbms for data storage software like graphic networks maps to tabular data for comprehensive management so this kind of operation are normally being carried out by the distribution owners or distribution company owners uh, those are in operation in most of the urban city of this country so this is how the mapping will be carried out digital mapping so we do have a pc okay with computer softwares like am fm and gis oracle rdbms and uh, which can capture the image the background then we can have gis mapping as we discussed which comes in and then you get the satellite image raster and then you edit the background and then you convert to a digital background map and then you get the gps survey for locations of facilities and database attributes and finally you create the digital network map with facilities in the database so this is the process of digitally mapping of a network so what will happen if i consider a huge urban city let's say mumbai and which has been digitized and then you can carry out any sort of analysis through this final network data which is very difficult for any human being to create i mean we can have an excel sheet with all the data available but the gis mapping can also take care of time to time change on your distribution system and which can help you for proper planning over a period of time now very quickly when you talk about automated mapping facility management geographical information system so what is am fm and gis we need to understand what are the benefits of am fm and gis so am and fm provides tools to convert paper maps to a digital environment and gis basically integrate those am fm data for an effective information system and due to which improved material management inventory control and preventive maintenance can be carried out integrated facility database with multi user access and explicit special representation link to related data can be achieved through am fm and gis combination now there are different application of those three which is planning estimation and costing management reports design and operational logistics maintenance and troubleshooting can be carried out easily now in general what is the gis process so we first actually create a digitalized background map from survey to sur from survey of indian maps and then conduct gps survey to locate substations transformers poles and consumer points collect attribute data of each pole and other facilities during the survey prepare the network in gis packages autocad map info and arc info use dgps for topographical details and handheld gps for network details use layers example geomedia professional software to represent distribution network coverage land background load landmark building rivers railway crossing equipment information pole conductors and transformers now electrical database from gis am fm can be used for voltage profile load flow analysis it can be used for fault flow analysis capacitor placement contingency analysis and segregation system losses both technical and commercial so this is one of the important segment how gis can be used 
or can support your network analysis for large distribution systems. And now GIS database of network attribute data also used for scatter displays and network operation. A uh, different type of uh, model in engineering where we talk about technical with the language of schematic diagrams and component functions. Then we go for physical which could be graph or 3D figures networks and then phenomenon modeling, mathematics, block diagram, equation modeling, algorithm, program language and assignment modeling. This is how actually the modeling of distribution system being carried out. Uh, let us quickly move to modeling of distribution system. Often the models used involve equations whose solutions are best computed by some numerical methods. An algorithm which is usually implemented by a computer program, for example, a planning engineer in a power utility may decide to model load flow on a feeder. Okay, there is a feeder and I am interested to know the load flow or the energy PQ flow, voltage scenarios, current scenarios, everything I like to identify. We have a load, we have a feeder, then we have connected to a substation. So, what is load current to me? which is sending and voltage upon line impedance plus load impedance that is V upon Z line plus Z load. What is the application? We can use this equation to compute voltages and currents by solving a set of simultaneous equation for various segments and loads in the system. Now, we can also calculate real power flow transmitted through the line which is V s the real power flow P which is V sending V receiving sin delta upon x. We can also calculate the P power and reactive power generated by a power plant okay, can be calculated P which is E V sin delta upon x and the reactive power uh, which is E V cos delta upon x minus V square upon x where E V delta x are generator no load EMF generator terminal voltages, power or torque angle of the generators. So, one can easily calculate the real power flow in the line, the real power generated by plant, the reactive power generated by a plant as well as the current and voltage in the feeders. Now, circuit model for load flow studies, we need to model different components such as line, load and other equipments along with connectivity in information used for load flow, fault current, reliability analysis and costing studies. And node dissolution, this talks about nodes represent every consumer meter, unit of equipment and pole to pole segment. Important to reliability analysis and load flow studies. Substation sizing and urban for any urban area become an important criteria. So, we normally optimum rating of substation being calculated which is 50 times the cube root of load density MBA per kilometer square. So, calculate the MBA per square kilometer area and its cube root multiplied by 50 will give you the optimal rating of the substation. And there are different important analysis which is essential for planning, design and operation of any power distribution systems and evaluate system performance and effectiveness of alternative expansion plans ensure high standard of reliability, security and quality in power system and which maximizes utilization of capital investment. The nature of analysis especially involves computation of network voltage and currents under specific conditions, provides particular kinds of information for specific purposes, example relay setting and harmonic effect, determines requirements for capacitor banks and other components. Finally, the steady state analysis which conducted for both normal and faulty networks typically ignores unbalanced system operations, assumes balanced operation for normal conditions and solves on a per phase basis, extrapolates results for three phase network to save time and effort while maintaining reasonable accuracy, which uses the method of symmetrical components for unbalanced system to simplify analysis. Now, naturally you need a huge computing device to carry out such analysis. I mean I am not getting into details, but for your benefits 
you can go through these slides and try to understand how computing facility is important for distribution system analysis and planning. And you need to procedure for computation, you can choose a particular method that is required for you, you can design the algorithms, flow charting and finally, different programming for your execution. So, with this we are stopping today. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.